Wonderful. Okay. This table will probably get empty shortly because it's the, the panelists are going to sit here. So if you want to sit here, this is probably the best seat right here. Yeah. Okay, great. Welcome. <clears throat> My name is Kiran Malhotra. I'm the Executive Director for Thai Silicon Valley, and I'm delighted to see all of you here today. We have a fantastic panel for you. Um, but before you hear about that, I usually like to do a little bit of an overview about Thai for folks who haven't been here before. And um, for folks who have been here before, um, it's a little review, and we'll quiz you at the end. Okay, the joke fell flat. Don't do that joke. Note to self. Um, how many of you are Thai members? Awesome. How many of you are not Thai members yet? John, you're not a Thai member yet? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, Patricia will catch you on the way out. $100 a year, 30 cents a day. You can't beat that. You get to come to 60 plus events plus TyCon. It's the deal of a lifetime. Um, so Thai was founded actually 20 years ago in 1992, right here in the Silicon Valley. Founded by a group of entrepreneurs, mostly from the Indus region. And they came here with their education and their willingness to work hard. And they became successful beyond their wildest imaginations. And they said, you know, we did this without a lot of support. Um, and we would like to come together and help other entrepreneurs and other people succeed. So that's what they did. They came together. They would come together on a weekly basis or a monthly basis and they would tell their stories. They would invite other entrepreneurs of the time to tell their stories. And over the past 20 years, the network has grown into 57 chapters in 14 countries with the sole purpose and mission of fostering entrepreneurship. Um, and so we have not diverted from that mission in 20 years and will not divert from that mission. Uh, we have four major stakeholders of Thai. We have our member community, of which most of you in the room are members. Um, we have our charter member community. Our charter member is an invitation-only group. Um, these folks are about 300 in Silicon Valley. They are very successful entrepreneurs, highly successful corporate executives um, or in academics, and we invite them to become charter members. They give us the one very, very important and probably the most precious thing they can give to us and, and you all, and that's their time and their expertise. And they give that freely. Um, in the form of chairing these programs um, on our board of directors as mentors, they really devote their time and a lot of energy for Thai. And there are several charter members in the room, and I'd like you all to, all charter members, could you please raise your hands high, very high, so everyone can see you? So it, they're all kind of clumped over in certain corners, but next time I'm going to have them spread around so each of you get a chance to meet them. But I would, you know, at the end of this, we usually have a little networking time. Go and find one of them or two of them and talk to them. They're wonderful people. They, I promise you, they will, they will, you know, you ask them for something. If they have it, they will give you their, their, their best advice or point you to somebody who can give you that advice. Um, they're wonderful people. And I'd like to uh, point out a few charter members in the room, starting with our president, Vish Mishra. Vish? Vish is, a, a, is one of the Thai originals, and um, this is actually his fourth and final year ter uh, fourth and final year as president, but we're prepared because we have a president-elect, and he's sitting over there, Feng Shukla. And Feng actually served the previous two years as our um, chair of charter member, uh, membership, and will be taking office next year for two years. And then we have our program chair, who's responsible for overseeing all these programs, and he is Naveen Bisht, which he's right over here. So thank you to all to our, my board members and thank you to all the charter members for uh, all the support and backbone and strength you give to this organization in making this what it is. Then we have our third category of stakeholder and that's our sponsor community. And these folks are from the VC corporations, the law firms, the big banks, the big corporate, corporate um, folks and service providers, and they provide the lifeblood. So we could not provide these programs that we do without the generous support of our sponsors and I see, I, I thought I saw Silicon Valley Bank in the room, but I know Stan's here from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. And, you know, really to all of the sponsors, thank you so much for the support that you give us. 
Um, and then I mentioned a fourth category, and that comes from all of the other three, and that's our volunteers. So I have a very small staff of five people, and everybody else that you see, from the people who help at the door to the board members, everybody else is a volunteer. Um, so we cannot do this thing without the help and support of the volunteers. So everybody who volunteers for Tire, who will or who has, thank you very much for your support. Um, we do, as I mentioned, we do about 60 pro, last year we did 64 programs here at Thai, and so that's more than one program a week. Um, and, and we do them across all the technology sectors, so this is one of them, life sciences, but we do cloud, social, mobile, and energy. We do purely networking mixers. We, do, we launched a program last year called My Story, which is the first Tuesday of each month where we feature a successful entrepreneur. Um, that kind of goes back to our roots where we, that on a monthly basis, they feature a successful entrepreneur to tell their story. Um, we launched another program last year called Pitch Fest, um, where the entrepreneurs get a chance to practice their pitch in front of a panel of VCs or investors. Um, and then in 2010, we, in late 2010, we launched a program called Thai Angels. And to date, Thai Angels has funded 15 companies to about $12.5 million. And um, so if, is that not right? Well, with VCs, with select VCs. VCs is actually much higher. Oh, much higher. Okay, so, so it's even better than I said. Um, and um, thank you for for uh, for jumping in, Bank. We actually, if you have a, a a promising startup that is looking for seed funding, or you know one, or you are one, I encourage you to apply to Thai Angels. Um, it's a very simple online process. Um, it's a, it's on a rolling basis, and the Thai Angels meets um, for dinner once a month. We just had our last meeting on Monday, and we have the chair of Thai Angels happens to be Mr. Shukla over here, and we have another of uh, uh, the screen the steering committee members, Mr. Raj Parik. Can you raise your hand, Raj? And then Naveen and, and, and of course, Vish, the fearless leader, is on, on all committees. Um, so if you have any questions and would like to apply or, or have any questions at all, please find out, find one of these folks. You can also talk to me or you can simply go online. There's a whole page on Thai Angels. Um, how many of you have been to TaiCon? Fantastic. So TaiCon is our flagship conference. We hold it every year in May. This year it is May 18th and 19th. It's right across the street at the convention center. And last year, TyCon hosted about 4,000 plus entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and everybody in between right at the convention center. And last year we had the distinction of receiving the, um, being named one of the 10 best conferences for ideas and entrepreneurship by Worth Magazine. And we were in the league with the World Economic Forum and TED and Demo and these huge conferences. Um, so we're extremely proud of that. TICON 2012 is going to be a bigger and better conference, our 20th anniversary celebration. Uh, I encourage you all to attend. The registration is going to open soon. Go to TICON.org. Many of you should have received the loyalty email. Did you receive this? If you have not registered yet, that ends tonight at midnight and that pricing will not be seen again. So I encourage you to go ahead and, and get your tickets or get lots of tickets and tell your friends. The other thing I wanted to mention about TyCon is that we have, we launched last year the TyCon Innovation Expo. And we had about 120 companies, everything from startups to big corporations to service providers and, and international country pavilions, showcasing their wares and their technology and services and products. And it was a thriving, buzzing, innovative place to be. Um, and we showcased a really cool Tesla car in there, and it was just a lot, it, very interesting in the place to be. We are doing that again this year. So if you are interested in expanding your universe, um, expanding your contacts, and showcasing your services, products, technologies, yourselves at TyCon, I encourage you to come and take a booth at the TyCon Innovation Expo. Um, and you can see me afterwards or email me later and I can be happy to give you all that information. Um, lastly, I would like to thank my team, my staff, my small but mighty staff of Thai Silicon Valley. You met Patricia and Poonam at the door. And I'd like to thank my board of directors. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring Naveen up here to introduce our chairs for the evening. Thank you. Give a big round of applause to Kiran and our small team over here. Um, I, I, I don't know if she didn't mention that Thai is one of the, 
I guess, only organization which is run very heavily by volunteers. And we have very small staff, and they do a great job in supporting all these programs. And of course, uh, so that's why I wanted to make sure we recognize that. Patricia is standing right there. So let's give them a round of applause again. So I, I would like to, before I, um, uh, before I introduce our co-chairs, I would like to first thank our outgoing chair. He's not here. I was expecting he would be here, Ram Reddy, who has uh, done a great job in bringing this life sciences program at Thai for several years. In fact, one of our co-chairs also worked tirelessly with him for a number of years. So anyway, wanted to really recognize that and appreciate uh, all the contribution Ram Reddy has made. Uh, for bringing this uh, program to life. And of course, he continues to help and volunteer with a number of other Thai programs, including something called Thai 15, Thaicon. So let's, uh, I wish he was here. He could have got a lot of applauses. Uh, so with that, now I will introduce uh, our two. We should applaud him anyway. anyway. That's a good idea. All right, Ram, wherever you are, we are applauding for you. <laughs> so. So, so our now two, we have two new co-chairs. Um, as Kiran was mentioning, like we have these industry sectors. So life, uh, every industry sector has two co-chairs, and these are all volunteers, just like our fearless leader here and uh, folks over there, Vank, uh, Raj, and everyone else. Um, so two new co-chairs. We have our Praveen Shah and um, uh, Dr. Mudit Jain. So, uh, so Praveen, as I said, has been. Um, already volunteered for, uh, and helping with Thai for over 10 plus years. And he is currently, uh, he's currently the CEO of a company called Mobiti, which he co-founded in 2002. And it, it's, a, it's a, boutique, uh, in, a boutique advisory firm and where he focuses 50% of his time in high-tech uh, Fortune 50 companies, as well as another 50% in incubating a, number of uh, you know, startups or early stage technology companies in the healthcare arena, and in fact has been CTO and co-founder for a number of them. Prior to that, he had also built a service integration firm, over 50 million plus in revenue, and also worked um, at one of the large uh, big four professional firms, KPMG, uh, and as well as in Philips uh, Consumer Division. So uh, Praveen has an MS from Lehigh University, and uh, B is B from India in Pune. So with that, um, uh, let's give him a big round of applause for coming on being the co-chair of Life Sciences. And another co-chair is Dr. Mudit Jain. Um, so Mudit has over 18 plus, uh, over 18 years of experience in the medical device industry. And he was, uh, he is a partner with uh, Synergy Life Sciences Partners uh, of a venture fund based in Portola Valley and focuses in medical devices. So anyone who is starting or looking for money, just grab him before he disappears today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and Mudit, uh, prior to uh, this VC fund, he was with uh, Johnson & Johnson in various positions. Uh, uh, R&D, product management, you'll find out soon why in R&D. R&D, product management, in investments, and in fact led their investments into a number of medical devices companies in Midwest and East Coast. Before that, he was with Guidant Corporation, again, in, in, in the devices industry. He holds a, a PhD from Duke University in, um, and, and actually, I had to write it down because I knew I wouldn't remember it and I really don't know what it is. So he was <laughs> awarded the first PhD in nation on uh, something called cardiac radio frequency ablation. So you can ask him later on, okay? <laughs> I won't dare to ask, I'll just go home. So, and he, at the same time, he also has an MBA from uh, Warden Business School. All of you probably already know about it. And he has a BE from a Regional Engineering College in uh, Nagpur in, in India. So with that, uh, I would like to invite Mudit Jain. He's also the host as, uh, for today's panel. And in fact, uh, really, really appreciate. One of the panelists came all the way from East Coast, from Johns Hopkins University. So really, really appreciate you flying all the way from there to be part of this. Uh, panel and part of this audience today. So with that, uh, let's give a big round of applause to Mudit and our panelists. Well, good evening and welcome to the Life Science Kickoff event for 2012. We have three very distinguished uh, panel members here for this event. I'll invite them to come over and take the seats here. 
Uh, and you know, we are going to talk about, uh, yes, please go ahead. Uh, we're going to talk about growing demand of healthcare technology and how these folks are actually capitalizing on this opportunity and what are the challenges that these guys face. And, you know, healthcare, so I'll switch guys a little bit here and get to the, uh, healthcare and politics. I mean, you can't separate the two. And considering that this is an election year, I thought it would be a good way to kick off this event by poking some fun at our politicians, esteemed politicians, and I'm an independent, so I can take the liberty of poking fun at both the sides. So we'll start off with that. All right, you guys go down here. All right, this says it all. All right? Uh, and, and you know, I'm very neutral, so you'll see one slide on Republicans, one on Democrats. So throw a party for a Congress, honest congressman, and it'll cost you nothing. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I, 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 I actually, I, and 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 I have to say, I actually worked with somebody who had actually worked for Bush, and I'll tell you, he's not as dumb as we all think he is. He's actually a pretty sharp guy. But anyways, all right. Did you guys get it? <laughs> It's a little bit slow on. Talk about family values. <laughs> All right. <coughs> okay, but Trump can't be over Trumped. <laughs> So this is the day after we kill Osama bin Laden. He's obviously calling George Bush. <laughs> and ending on a positive note, I mean, the Republicans and Democrats can work together. So just read through. I know, Arnold. I know. But this is your last hope. You have to go back to the past and prevent the founder of British Petroleum. OK? <laughs> from ever being born. <coughs> his name was William Knox. This is a picture. Go get his mother. <laughs> All right. With that, we'll turn over to a little bit more serious note here. Um, you know, so when we talk about healthcare technology, we are talking about uh, basically mobile gaming, healthcare IT, and diagnostic and therapeutic <coughs> medical devices. And within the context of wellness and prevention, healthcare delivery, and diagnostic and therapeutic medical devices, as I pointed out earlier. Uh, we, for housekeeping, we have each speaker will talk about 25 to 30 minutes, and then we'll, if we can hold on to the questions towards the very end, we'll pass around the microphone, and you can ask the questions at that point in time. And our first speaker is um, Doug Kerr. Doug is currently CEO and co-founder of a Menlo Park-based startup called Rallyon. It's a healthcare gaming company, and Doug will talk more about that company and uh, the technology that they are developing and the impact on healthcare. Doug has 20 years of entrepreneurial and senior management <coughs> experience. Prior to founding Relion, he was CEO at MedVantage, a healthcare informatics software provider whose products were used by large health plans in pay for performance and consumer transparency programs. Previous to that, he ran the worldwide service business for Accurate the manufacturer of a robotic device company for treating cancer. Uh, during his three years there, he helped uh, Accurate transition from a late stage startup to a successful public startup com public company with operations in 14 countries. Prior to Accurate, Doug held leadership roles in two consumer internet startups in the education and restaurant space. Through most of the 90s, Doug held a number of senior operating roles at ADAC Labs, a medical device and software provider now part of Philips Medical Systems. In 1996, as a Vice President of Quality, he led the company's successful effort to win the Malcolm Bridge National Quality Award. Doug is an avid skier, basketball player, and youth sports coach. And he loves to travel and cook when time allows. He earned an MBA from Stanford University and a BA in Economics from Dartmouth College. With that, I'll pass it on to Doug. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Mudu. And thank you all for having me here. Uh, I'm going to take about 20, 25 minutes and tell you the story about my uh, uh, new company. Uh, I'll just note uh, right off the bat that we have just recently, meaning in the last week, changed our name, uh, the former name of the company. I'll show you a little bit of the, the, uh, the difference in the two uh, brandings and the, uh, the actual application we're going to be delivering. Uh, we used to be called Beep Coach, uh, B I B E Coach. Um, and I'll tell you a little more of the history of uh, how that uh, came to be. Uh, we currently sell a SaaS based software solution to corporate HR departments uh, to run, um, make their wellness efforts for their employees uh, fun, exciting, and engaging. Um, I'll tell you quite a bit about the uh, kind of how we came to decide that was the best use of our time and energy over the last three years. Uh, we've been at it just over three years and hope you find it interesting and uh, look forward to your questions at the end. So the, uh, the history of the company, um, about three and a half years ago, I was introduced by a friend, uh, Ajit Shah. Some of you may know him, he's a venture capitalist in Portola Valley as well. Um, he introduced me to Jennifer Gil Roberts, who had already hatched an idea. I just recently left an advantage um, uh, after a stint there and after we um, they transitioned to a different management team. Uh, it was actually bought by a number of Blue Cross Blue Shield plans and decided they wanted to have a uh, a Blue Shield, Blue Cross uh, management team in place there. So I moved on and uh, luckily got introduced to Jennifer around that time. We had an idea for a mobile application. Uh, she was a venture capitalist for many years, investing in mobile technologies, and realized there was a gap in the, uh, the types of deals she was seeing, where she didn't see anything in health and wellness that was interesting, it was a personal interest to hers. Uh, so we spent a couple months uh, investigating the space, taking her idea and, and running it by several uh, uh, friends and family, and, and decided that uh, we were going to shift our energy to um, learning a little more about the corporate wellness space. Uh, we decided that her, her uh, application that she had envisioned was going to work very well uh, for the type of thing that corporate uh, uh, wellness programs were looking for. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So we actually founded the company after about three months of uh, an diligence on the space uh, at the end of 2008, uh, formed it as Veep Coach, uh, technically Veep Solutions was the corporate name in Delaware. Um, we immediately uh, raised about 290000 and I apologize, I just realized I didn't put a, uh, a funding slide in here, so as I talk you through the history, I'll tell you a little more about our funding history as well. So we'll stay on the slide just for a couple minutes. Uh, so we raised about 250000 uh, to kick off development. Uh, we had several people that were interested uh, kind of viscerally in health and wellness, uh, one of whom was an angel investor who had just lost about 100 pounds and was interested in uh, kind of helping others uh, through new tools and new applications that could help uh, people find better ways to, to maintain or improve their health. <coughs> um, so we started building a prototype. Um, we uh, trialed it with about a half a dozen uh, partners and beta, uh, not beta, uh, pilot customers, including people like Methodist Health Center in Houston, uh, their weight management center, where they had a huge problem with recidivism. They, people would lose 100 pounds and get it right back. So our application was uh, a tool that could help them coach themselves through uh, the types of things they knew they needed to do to, to keep the weight off. Um, we then fairly quickly moved from our, our, our prototype to an alpha. Uh, we hired a new CTO to help us uh, uh, envision the future. Uh, we, we totally changed our technology platform and built an alpha that we then trialed with another half dozen pilots uh, so we could uh, start working on our beta. Uh, we did that uh, in the, around the end of 2009. Um, we then uh, started running out of money and raised another small round. This was all on convertible notes. So we raised 200, <coughs> by 250 and then another 250 on convertible notes uh, where we're still kind of finishing proving out the concept. Uh, <clears throat> the beta was a, uh, a big shift. I'll talk more about pivots in a moment, but um, the beta had, had some shifts in terms of our focus, but we were still selling to corporate HR departments, and still the value proposition was, was essentially the same. Um, we were continuing to listen. That's probably the biggest thing we did, in our, and we are continuing to do to understand what they were, uh, what they were missing, why were wellness programs uh, potentially being effective. You've heard data that said that you know, there's a, there are ROI on wellness programs. Uh, some studies, like the HBR, uh, Harvard Business Review article, uh, generally showed about a three to one uh, rate of return on investment, but the problem is a lot of them didn't go very deep into the companies. So the problem was the eye. There wasn't enough money being invested to actually bend the curve on the overall healthcare uh, expense for a company. Um, so um, to make a long story short, we, we continued the beta, uh, signed up our first paying customers on the beta. Uh, Brocade Communications was actually our first customer. They've been with us uh, almost uh, two and a half years already, and they've renewed twice, which is great for us. Uh, we did our commercial release in October 2010 and immediately launched a couple more customers that had been waiting for the release to, to go live and to get started. Um, and we've really been, since last October, since October 10, uh, continuing to, uh, uh, to listen to the market and where we ought to go next. Uh, you'll hear about the rebranding more uh, a little bit later, but uh, we decided that the, the coach was left over from our original business model, which was a virtual health coach on your phone. Uh, and I'll tell you a little more why we, we shipped it off that in just a moment. 
Uh, so our rebranding is now about halfway complete. Over the next 30 days, we're going to finish it. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek at, uh, at what's coming. So our mission, you can wait while it comes up, uh, is to bring the power of social gaming uh, to corporate wellness to help organizations build healthier, more productive cultures uh, through team-based tailored challenges. So our primary product that we're, we're selling to companies is competitions and challenges around healthy activities. So walking, uh, weight loss, nutrition, uh, wellness in general, uh, we can package <coughs> together any type of challenge you want. I'll have a slide on that coming up. Uh, we really feel we're helping companies solve a big problem they have, which is how do we engage people in wellness, how do we make it fun for them, how do we, how do we move the needle from engagement that's often in the single digits to something that could be pretty close to 100% of their employees uh, engaged in healthy activities and in their wellness programs. So I'm going to jump to, cut to the chase here and show you what we do, and then I can tell you a little more about the, the what's and the why's and what the market looks like. Uh, so essentially what we sell is a challenge platform. Uh, we have a platform that makes it extremely easy to customize any type of competition for any type of team any, you know, or individuals uh, within a corporation at any level. Uh, all of our customers, uh, with the exception of one right now, are using us internationally, using us globally uh, with their employees around the world. It is in English only, um, so someday we'll uh, have the money to do invest in uh, languages. Uh, but currently people can configure it to be uh, uh, teams by country, teams by region, teams by office, individual teams of anywhere from two to ten people. Uh, so it's a very flexible platform so that whatever their needs are or their desires, we can pretty much meet uh, with a turnkey solution. Uh, we also sponsor our own challenges, so on any given week, anybody who's on our system can actually join up and participate in any of about five challenges that we post uh, on our website so that they can uh, uh, pick something that's interesting to them and, and fun for them. We have many people that are serial challengers. We have one person that's done over 100 in the last year and a half uh, by always being in one, essentially. So we know there's definitely a, a cohort of people out there that have decided this is a great way for them to engage in healthy behavior, and they just pick whatever that next challenge is and join up because it gives them that extra boost they need to, uh, uh, to do something that week that they would you know, different than they would do otherwise. And we also have the ability for any person that's on our system to create their own challenge. We have a set of templates. Uh, within about a minute, they can actually create a challenge, invite two to ten to fifty friends if they want uh, and be their own kind of champ uh, challenge leader. Uh, so we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, a little part of our secret sauce is we've invested a lot in our first year in messaging. We have thousands and thousands of messages around different healthy activities. Uh, so if you sign up for reminders or challenge updates, uh, you get a, a uh, kind of a, a grab bag of tips and messages that uh, motivate you, keep you going, give you information and uh, uh, tips about how to stay healthy and how to do that, whatever that activity is. We have about 150 different activities that people can choose from, uh, everything from nutrition, wellness, uh, exercise, uh, general, uh, uh, we call limit activities, things you want to do less of, so you know, help giving up cigarettes or alcohol or, or other bad things. Uh, and then the real uh, heart of our system, which is what differentiates us from a lot of the consumer applications that do some similar things, is we have a, a whole dashboard reporting module for the HR folks. So we really are a SaaS solution. They have a, a control panel where they can actually launch challenges. We're currently doing it for most of them, uh, but they have the ability to do that. They have reporting that they can get to. They can break down their organization uh, to multiple levels so they can look at stats of usage by facility or geography, however they set it up. Uh, we give them two levels right now, but in the future we can give them unlimited levels of, uh, of uh, breakdown. Uh, just an example of the types of challenges we do, um, there really is no limit because it's completely configurable to add, uh, lump them together into challenges, assign point values. So for example, a challenge that's uh, just around wellness might be uh, drink eight glasses of water, get 30 minutes of exercise, sleep seven hours, and, and get uh, five servings of fruits and vegetables. We can lump those all into one challenge where you assign point values to each of those levels. Uh, we're doing a very interesting one with a company out in Tennessee next month uh, where they have flights of stairs, uh, nutrition, exercise, we're associating it all with steps and we can convert you know, any of those activity units into other units uh, through our engine. Uh, so they've got some very creative things going on. But we can do fitness, we do weight loss, we do you know, vitality and some of the things I was just talking about. Uh, stress management, a lot of companies are interested in. Uh, we do what we call cold turkey challenges, which are some of the things I was mentioning that people are trying to give up. Uh, we, we do a uh, usually one week or, or at most two weeks of cold turkey challenge where you get credit for every day you didn't do that thing. So whether it's eating junk food, uh, drinking alcohol, having a cigarette, um, <coughs> eating red meat, uh, we do what we call cold turkey challenges and, and we usually have a couple of those going on for, uh, for everybody. And then a thing that uh, I'll talk about more in a minute in terms of our, our business model, we actually go beyond health. So as we, as we sell to HR and they see the power of our platform for engaging employees and getting them to participate in things, uh, we actually are already doing things like community challenges or, or charity challenges or green, green challenges that have a, a synergy with some of the wellness activities. 
Uh, so at Brocade, for example, we did a bike to work challenge, which was a joint effort between their environmental committee and the wellness committee. So we, people got credit for both biking miles as well as extra credit for biking to work, which met their goals of, uh, uh, kind of company goals of having more people biking to work and reducing uh, the smog, that type of thing. So here's a sneak, pe uh, sneak peek at the, uh, the new application that is uh, just about to be released. Uh, it shows you, actually it's a little bright. Um, so it's basically set up as a game console. I'll show you a little later what our current site looks like and you'll see why this is a huge improvement to our, our application. Uh, makes our current one look uh, pretty stodgy. Uh, so we're trying to push the envelope. Uh, what we've seen is that uh, there's a lot of people out there that are you know, competing with us and pitching challenges. Uh, what we're really trying to do is, uh, is to say that we can make uh, wellness into a game for people and get even higher levels of engagement than they've seen ever before. Uh, so we've created a console type view that's familiar to people that do social gaming uh, on either iPad, it's actually designed to fit on an iPad, but uh, uh, it's very familiar to people that do gaming. We hired a great product manager out of the gaming industry and uh, it still allows us to, to manage things the same way we manage anything else. So it collects your data for you uh, very easily. It allows you to see the leaderboard, to see your, your score, to do all the conversions I was talking about when we assign different point values to things. Uh, so it's a, uh, I'll show you a few more screenshots a little bit later, but it's uh, uh, coming out in about a month. <clears throat> so I was talking before about the, the founding of the company. We really thought we were a, a health play when we started. And we, I convinced Rudy that, uh, or he convinced me we should come here even though we were, are trying to actually create a pretty distinct line between the healthcare side of, of wellness and the, the side and what we're doing. What we're doing is really providing an engagement tool to, to employers to engage their employees in wellness and healthy activities, but also in other things in the company <clears throat> for many different reasons. And I'll elaborate on that kind of as we go through the, the talk. Uh, but the initial idea was a fun mobile-based um, uh, health coaching tool uh, on your phone. So we always had humor as, as a big part of what we do. So all of our, our messaging has a, a high humor component. Um, and uh, one of the things we realized very quickly was that <clears throat> by launching with corporations uh, th three years ago, uh, they really weren't ready for a mobile application. So we very quickly backpedaled from being you know, almost purely mobile to saying if we're going to sell to a company that has 10% smartphone penetration, we're going to have to be a web-based application if they want all their employees to use it. Uh, not coincidentally, what we've also learned uh, more recently is that to sell to companies that don't have um, computers for many of their employees, when you get out of Silicon Valley or get to, to certain types of companies, even in Silicon Valley, uh, there's a lot of employees that don't have computers at work and don't even have them at home and probably don't have a smartphone either, and they still want to participate. So we have a new feature called Captain Tracking, uh, which we started, uh, actually rolled out for a very large challenge at Flextronics last fall. Uh, where the captain is the only one that needs access and the other teammates are essentially proxies under him and he can actually enter all their data but they show up on the leaderboard just like a regular user and uh, that is proving to be a very big seller. Uh, we just recently talked to Kellogg's out in uh, Michigan and their biggest problem that they've had in wellness is not being able to engage their factory workers. So we, we can solve their problem you know, instantly. Uh, so they're very excited about that. Um, so anyway, after our initial idea for uh, this kind of consumer-based mobile health coach, uh, we, we quickly pivoted to corporations um, before we even launched. Uh, about a year later, uh, we decided that the, the challenges were the most interesting, interesting thing we were doing. So we initially had a high tracking component where people would get reminders, they'd come and track their data, you know, whether it's exercise or nutrition to, to keep them on track. And we decided that uh, what we had seen before then, which was that there are trackers and non-trackers, um, and that the trackers are about 2% of the population, uh, was our estimate at the time, that by making it really easy and really fun to track, you can move that from about 2% to 4%. And that people just weren't going to track just to track. And that what we were seeing already, we had launched our first challenges, was that if you get people into a challenge, you can get you know, 20, 30, 40, 50% of a company to participate, and while they're participating, they're tracking. But that was uh, that's about as far as we pushed it, and we decided that was actually better than just worrying about the 4%, and we'd rather have 30, 40, 50 percent, do it for a while, some of them will stick, some of them will come back and do it again, and that's really how we built our model, that we think challenges are a way to get people involved in wellness activities or health activities, and um, that moves the ball forward, which is really what companies are looking to do, and to try and convert people into trackers was not something we were going to try and tackle because that's a huge human behavior problem that we uh, weren't ready to, to take on. And then last year, uh, so this, this was about... Uh, See, the beginning of 2010, uh, we made that shift. So pretty much all of our development, we, we still have the vestiges of everything we've ever done in the system, and we're starting to jettison some of them. Um, so we still have the tracking, the messaging, the reminders, and all the things that uh, a, you know, a certain group of people like, so we haven't had to take it out. But all of our 
new energy and investment and development uh, went into the challenge engine and the challenge uh, deployments uh, over the last year and a half. Um, and then just last year we decided that uh, we hadn't gone far enough in the gaming side, so we decided that we were going to be the leader in bringing you know, gaming, uh, game-based application to corporate wellness. So we have uh, really redesigned it, uh, reskinned the application, it still works largely the same way, but it's much more familiar once again to people that like gaming. It allows us to decide how far to go for any particular company. Some companies get it, and some companies are a little trepidatious, if that's a word, about moving too far into gaming. Uh, but we have the ability to kind of tailor uh, the, the UI for them and tailor how we, how we pitch it to them. So what's the opportunity we've really, we really seen? Um, you know, we're working mostly with larger companies. Uh, we see demand from mom and pop companies all the way up to Walmart and uh, fortuitously, uh, I believe the second biggest company in the country by employee size just signed a contract with us yesterday, uh, which is Young Brands. So they have about a million and a half employees. Um, most of the companies we're dealing with are self-insured. Uh, so virtually 100%, probably not quite that, of the uh, Fortune 2000 are self-insured, but uh, I think there's a big uh, um, misconception among people that are looking at healthcare. I mean, who's really paying for healthcare? It's not the insurance companies, and mostly, you know, it's the companies. Uh, so we've realized, uh, I think, for most of the last three years, that companies are really a ground zero in the healthcare crisis, if you will, and they really don't get credit for, for being there. I think the people look at the, the providers, they look at the consumers, and they look at the insurance companies. But in our view, companies are ground zero. Uh, at the same time, they're paying for healthcare for most of their employees. Uh, they're also creating an environment where people spend 8, 10, 12 hours a day, and they're creating an environment in many cases that's extremely unhealthy for their employees. So they have the ability to change what they're doing to help themselves, and we're, we're here to help them do that. Um, by our estimates, uh, companies are spending about $10 billion in wellness. It's a pretty broad bucket, uh, everything from fitness centers to disease management to uh, challenges and things like we do. Uh, we think that actually the, the piece of that that could uh, be uh, kind of open to us over the next few years is probably you know 500 million, uh, probably at most, but that includes things that are more social and and gaming and and mobile around health, uh, corporate wellness. Um, this uh, I'll come back to this orange arrow in a second, but we think there's a there's a leap there between how much they're spending and what they're getting uh, in terms of engagement. So uh, every company we're talking to is hoping to engage the majority of their employees. You know, they're hoping for 100 percent. They need to be happy with 50 percent. Um, they're seeing in many cases, you know, 5%, 10%, with the exception of some very simple things like uh, biometric screenings or health assessments where you can get 60 or 70%. Uh, but those things, uh, we don't really consider those engagement. Those are generally done in 20 minutes a year and you're done. So we think that doesn't really move the needle in terms of getting people engaged in, in health and wellness. Uh, and the other interesting stat that we have is that um, as companies look for engagement solutions, uh, there's an Aetna study that came out last year that said about 80% of the companies Aetna deals with are either currently using or planning on using challenges and competitions in their wellness programs. Uh, the good news for us is that most of them are doing them on spreadsheets or on bulletin boards, and uh, that limits you in many ways. It's very uncompelling for one. It doesn't really allow you to do it very easily across geographies and keep everybody on the same page, and it definitely doesn't allow it to be real time. So we solve all those problems, and we can literally come in and uh, for about a tenth the administrative effort uh, by a company and f with a much better results and much better fun uh, kind of quotient for the, for the employees, uh, bring in challenges that they can run worldwide and we can launch one in about 10 minutes. So uh, it's a much better solution. So the, the other thing that we, uh, we've seen in talking to companies all over the, all over the country is that the, in the corporate well-being space, people are literally tearing out their hair trying to figure out how to solve this engagement problem. Um, we're being brought in when they, they basically have given up. We're being brought in when they're trying to get started and, and trying to figure out how do we avoid the pitfalls that other companies have seen where they're, they're really trying to, you know, willing to pump money into this but not getting results. Um, they really want to get people involved in healthy activities. They really want to, to find something that works to uh, help them do this. So our answer for them is that gaming is the answer. Uh, most companies and, and most healthcare institutions look at health uh, employees as patients or as conditions. You know, they start with the fact of let's go target the, the people that have uh, that are costing us the most right now, which is kind of like chasing your tail. I won't go into all the details, but uh, but I did under, uh, did hear a stat that you know that the uh, if six percent of your employees are costing you you know eighty percent of your healthcare dollars, only about twenty percent of the same employees are going to be the ones that cost you next year. So you're always chasing your tail if you're just um, focusing on this year's big problems. So you really need to look at the population, or in our view, and what we're trying to do is help look at the population to get everybody uh, on a reduced risk curve. <clears throat> so the, the, uh, 
the other reason that we, we're looking at gaming is because we think by, by treating people as what we call gamer types, and one of the, one of the types, or the, there's a guy named Bartles who came up with these personality types for a certain type of gamer, but we adopted these as something we could build on and design around. If you look at people as gamer types, so what's going to engage them in a game, uh, you can actually contemplate engaging 100% of your employees. If you look at them in the Prochaska readiness for change, uh, stages of change model, or if you look at them in a, who's got what conditions, you're automatically limiting yourself to a certain uh, set of people that you're able to engage. Uh, what we do is we say, okay, everyone's, everyone's a potential target for us. They may, be able to, they may engage purely because they're social, and this is a corporate event going on, and they want to be involved. They don't need to ready to change, they don't need to want to exercise more, they don't need to want to do anything, but they need to be a little bit competitive, they need to be social, and you got them. And we can get, uh, uh, we've seen as high as 70% in corporate-wide activities so far, we've seen almost 100% when we're doing sub-corporate uh, challenges, meaning one office against another. So you may have two offices of 100 people, we can get virtually 100% of the people to participate. And once again, not because they're interested in improving their health, just because that they want to participate. So we think this is a, a big change in the, the thinking about companies, um, I think uh, I go to conferences where you hear them talking about employees as patients, and I think it just, just rubs me wrong when you hear that, because they're, they're not. I mean, companies are not hospitals. They're trying to run the company. They're trying to figure out how do I motivate my employees and, and, and build and develop a healthy workforce, and that's what we help them do. So how do we add value? Uh, we make health and wellness fun for the employees. Uh, we actually, uh, it's probably not true, but in one survey after um, a, uh, a big challenge we did at a company and the response from the employee the survey was, this is the most fun I ever had. I don't really believe it, but it's nice to hear that occasionally. <laughs> um, we do get lots of great feedback though, because in many companies that don't have fun cultures, this is a way for them to, to manufacture fun and do something that employees do, do get a kick out of. Um, we can engage dispersed or disconnected workforces. I was talking about the captain tracking and the, the global uh, populations and uh, we're working with some companies that, are, that have truck drivers participating and it's, just very, it's very hard to engage those people in a, in a facility-based wellness program. Uh, we have mobile and tablet applications. It's all browser-based right now, but we have a lot of users on iPads and, and smartphones of any kind. Uh, we enable people to track and report. Oh, sorry, we, we have, this, as I showed you, the module that allows the HR to get the data they need to, to run up their chain of command. Uh, we have an integration with Fitbit, if you know Fitbit, and we'll be doing other APIs to other devices. Uh, we actually have one customer that had 2,000 people. That, after they used us, they went out and bought 2,000 Fitbits. They could do more different types of challenges using Fitbits. Um, and actually, the biggest part of what we do, the, one of the, our biggest differentiators right now that I think is our, um, a competitive differentiator for us is helping companies figure out what to do. Uh, we have one cus customer that uh, basically brought us in and had, had tried to work with their, their carrier to provide a wellness program. They didn't like anything their carrier brought in. They had asked us what we, what we would do for them. We told them, they said, well, you guys are the missing link. This is what we need to do. This is the type of program that we were envisioning that we wanted to have our employees do. It's going to be fun. It's going to be visible. It's going to engage large numbers of people. Uh, here's just a quick example of, uh, of what we did at Flextronics. Uh, we did a four-week step challenge there. Uh, they had about 7,500 eligible people, so we got about a third, which is, is not great. It's not their best uh, engagement, but it was uh, pretty good because it was our biggest actual numbers. Um, so they had about 2,300 participants on 219 teams. They had almost 80% completed it, which meant they tracked and participated all the way through the end. Uh, looking at statistics for competitors, we think 80% is a great number for people in a, a challenge like this to actually finish and stay, stay engaged. Uh, we have a social wall, so we track stats on how many people are posting on the wall, because that's one of the things that's, that brings people back to the site to, to, and keeps them, uh, keeps them happy, and, and logged almost 600 million steps through this. And once again, we didn't do it before and after. We're going to be doing some of that uh, this year to be able to say, you know, what, what was your typical before the challenge and after, uh, but we don't care. It's still a great number, and uh, the customer was uh, ecstatic with these results. Uh, they, they had hoped to get about 1,200 people participating, and we got 2,300. If you can read these, this is a few examples of what we're really trying to accomplish. Uh, companies that are buying us are not necessarily buying us just to reduce health costs. Uh, I think health costs is kind of a given that by moving in the direction of wellness programs and healthier activities, you're going to reduce costs. Uh, they have very specific objectives, though, around team building, morale, productivity, um, uh, attraction and retention of, of the right type of employees by having the right culture. Uh, so some of the things that we saw in the feedback from our survey of the, the users, uh, sorry, the, the players in this challenge, um, just reinforced exactly what the company was trying to accomplish. So you know, we, we can let the employees take the, uh, uh, the burden of, of telling them how, how good it was and what they got out of it, but this is exactly what we were pitching that you can get out of this, and we think we're successful and, and usually are. So who are our customers? Um, I think the most interesting, interesting thing about our customer list 
<coughs> is that we pretty much cross the industrial landscape. Uh, everything from Yum Brands and Pizza Hut um, to Ernst & Young, you know, so accounting, uh, to IDT and Flextronics, uh, and Brocade, so high-tech companies. Assuring is basically a call center company. Uh, Promega is a biotech company. Uh, Flex is mostly manufacturing, as I said. Uh, we just signed up uh, our first Canadian company today, which is another great example. This is not just about health costs. It's about actually changing the, the health status and the, the health culture of your company. Uh, because they don't have the same health cost issues in Canada. And uh, uh, we think that the, uh, this just represents what we're seeing you know, in, in prospective customers, too. There's no industry that's immune to wanting to do this. Um, my wife just called me, actually, when I was driving down there and said she had lunch with somebody and said that uh, they work in a hospital and said there are challenges going on all the time uh, among the employees. Once again, probably using spreadsheets, so we're going to make a sales call. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we see this going on everywhere, and, and once again, it's... Uh, uh, pretty much every company in America, if not the world, is a potential customer for us, which is great. Uh, it's also bad because as, as entrepreneurs with limited uh, resources, uh, it would be nice if we could focus and find one place or one industry or one vertical where we could um, you know, spend more time, but that's just not, uh, hasn't proved to be the case yet, although we're still looking. Uh, so we take you through a couple quick snapshots of the, the, both the old and the new, just so you can... Uh, uh, compare. This is actually our current application. So this is a challenge page <coughs> that we're using today. Uh, it has a uh, what we call a little game map, which shows how you compare to the people that are around you and the leaders of the challenge. Uh, there's a leaderboard, which I don't scroll down to. Uh, the wall where people can post. It's just like a any any kind of uh, a wall. Uh, it has uh, what we call achievement levels. So when you start, you pick an achievement level. You know, a lot of people know going into a challenge with 500 or 1,000 people that they're not going to win. Uh, so we allow them to pick a level that they consider winning for them. Uh, so we can message them around achieving that or not achieving that. Um, so that's proved to be very effective. One of the most interesting things about our application is we have <coughs> quite a bit of stuff in here, much more than we all often think we do, that we've built in over the years. And when we go do focus groups or surveys, we often find out that there are people that love little things that we've forgotten about that were even in there. <laughs> so it uh, blows our mind a little bit that some people love the achievement levels and some people love our uh, we call our uh, our coach's corner where we flash just health tips. You know, ro they rotate. One person says the first thing she does every morning is come and wait for the rotation to finish so she can read them all. We have no idea. We haven't even paid attention to that in about a year and a half. Uh, but it's pulled from a database that we, we built back then. How am I doing on time? I lost track. Okay, sorry. All right, so I'm just about done. Uh, so we're going to flip through a couple screenshots just to give you a sense of the new look compared to that one. Much more gaming, much more fun. Um, just about ready to launch, and I'll wrap up with one slide. Um, there's animations, so I uh, won't take the time to show you some of those, but there are animations built into many of the, uh, the, uh, the pages as things happen. Uh, we have mobile pages that are uh, uh, designed to be extremely easy to enter data, to see how the leaderboard's going, uh, do all the, the key functions you need to do in the challenge. So I'll just wrap up with kind of lessons learned. So one of the things that uh, you know we've seen, probably in comparison, uh, in comparing ourselves to others and other startups we see, is neither Jennifer or I. Jennifer actually has an engineering background, but not particularly relevant to what we're doing today. Uh, so we're not the ones who are going to go code over the weekend, or we're not the ones who, when the company started, uh, we're going to build the prototype ourselves and be able to uh, to kind of get through to a proof of concept without having to raise some money. Uh, so it is a uh, a problem both with VCs. I think VCs like technical founders. Um, you know, we are more the visionaries and the, the, the planners. Um, and I think with cash, too. Once again, we've at times uh, went without, uh, without pay and weren't able to, but still had to pay developers. So we were certainly willing to do it ourselves, but we couldn't move the ball forward uh, without paying other people. So uh, that is a, a lesson learned. Not much I can do with that one. Um, you know, spend carefully until you have the money to do otherwise. Uh, we've been extremely frugal and lean and mean our whole, our whole history. Uh, I didn't really finish the funding history before, but uh, in total we've raised about $2 million so far uh, over three years. Uh, so we've, this caused us to be extremely lean to mean. We currently have about 10 people, um, and we're currently still burning cash. Uh, we are looking for money, so anybody who's interested, please see me later. Uh, we're currently trying to raise our, our next round. Um, you know, one of the other things is that the, some markets take time to develop, and particularly if you're ahead of your time. So we do believe that we had kind of foreseen where things were going about two years ago with the, the wellness market and, and the things we heard uh, we, that we believe and that we believe would come to pass have really come to pass. The market is, is changing. Uh, we're starting to see RFPs for challenge solutions, wellness challenge solutions. Uh, <clears throat> Mercer, a big healthcare consultant, uh, has just brought us into two big deals. So 
the space that we had envisioned a couple years ago has become a space, which is this corporate health gaming space. Um, be resourceful, uh, particularly if you're doing something fun, interesting, or with social benefit. What I mean by that is we have actually attracted quite a few people that have come in to work for nothing uh, because we're doing something with a social good and it looks like it's fun. Uh, we have a lot of people that have worked for well below market wages uh, for a long time. Um, and I think, uh, you know, had we not gone to find these resources, we, we wouldn't be alive today. So uh, we were extremely resourceful. Uh, nothing new, team, team, and team. Uh, getting the right people on the, the field at the right time is something that's a continual struggle and making sure that they stay the right team uh, for what we're trying to do. So we uh, uh, continue to, to work a lot on that. And then last is never give up. Uh, we've been had our ups and downs, as most startups have. Uh, I think one time, two years ago, before we did our funding round, we were probably two weeks away from being out of cash, but uh, uh, got things to work out, and there's been a couple other times when it was, uh, it was close as well. So uh, we haven't given up yet, and <clears throat> things are looking good, and uh, we hope to uh, hope we made it. So thanks very much. to invite my next speaker, uh, Dr. Yan Cha, uh, who's Director of Kaiser Permanente's Information Technology Innovation and, and Advanced Technology Group called the IAT. Uh,